Welcome back to another episode of Bow Hunter Die. You know, Justin, we are starting to get into the hot, hot, hot days of summer, yes. and all the guys are starting to figure out what bucks are finally looking big. Yeah. And I tell you what, there's some big ones. Yeah, no, there's, some, there's definitely some great deer out there. You know, as Todd said, we're kind of getting into this last part of summer where it's like this home stretch before season. So you got guys out running cameras, yeah. doing, you know, final food plot preparation, getting ready to go on elk hunts, you know, you and Tyler and some of the other guys. So we're really hitting that home stretch before animals are hopefully, fingers crossed, going to start hitting the ground soon. And, and it's pretty interesting, too, just with how long we've been doing the show. It's kind of funny now. It was our seventh season. You're starting to see... The age of our whole team. You know, the sure. kids are starting to pop in like crazy. I think. I think every. Yeah. I think there's a kid in almost every uh, episode here on this. Yeah, one. every year there's a few more kids kind of going on those first hunts. Uh, and actually, that's uh, some of the the segments. I shouldn't say not hunts uh, that we're going to see this week. We've actually got Dean, who's out, you know, with his son, kind of getting ready for the season, and then Mike Pierce as well, getting his daughter ready. But you know, first off, Todd, we're going to uh, kick things off in Wisconsin. We got Chad Stillman and uh, a new team member, Marcus Wagner. Uh, Chad and Marcus have teamed up to do a little bit of hunting and filming together and they've got an update for us so let's check that out now. All right Chad Stillman here, Cameron. Marcus Wagner. Marcus Wagner, uh, newest pro staff on uh, bowhunting.com team this year. Marcus and I are going to be teaming up. We have some very cool things that we're excited about this year. Uh, it's probably the most excited I've been for any any coming deer season uh, that I can remember. So we're getting ready to glass a bean field tonight where I've been seeing some really good deer. Um, actually the same bean field that I shot that buck in a couple years ago. But uh, So we're just checking in here. We've been uh, busy, Marcus especially putting in food plots, not on this farm, but another farm about an hour from here. Um, so we're gonna break that down for you, kind of what we've been doing. We have we have three plots on this on this farm that we hunt about an hour from here in southeast Wisconsin. Um, we named them after the greatest uh, battle that the greatest generation in this world is responsible for. The Normandy invasion, Utah, we have Juneau, and we have uh, Omaha, are our three main plots. Marcus, run us through Omaha. We did a lot of work there. Yeah, Omaha, we were uh, exceptionally busy in this spring and summer. Um, we got two acres of soybeans, roughly. We got probably an acre or so of um, corn, and then within the next week, we'll probably get our Heartland plot in. Um, and probably from there, we'll move move to Juneau. Uh, Juneau, we have probably acre and a half, two acres mm -hmm. of soybeans. Um, then from there, we're also going to put a Heartland plot in over there. Uh, that'll probably be three quarters of an acre. And then from there, we will go to Utah. Utah's our, that's our go-to. I think that one's going to produce. In, in Utah, last year we had some issues with, with drainage. So this year, Marcus was a, was a wizard on the uh, mini excavator. He dug a probably 10, 12 foot deep pond, ran drain tile to it to dry the entire, about two acres of plot out. And uh, in there, we, we have Heartland Wildlife, uh, like clover. clover. Um, what else you got on the other side? Um, we got the clover, which probably takes up three quarters of an acre. And then on the other side, uh, I planted some soybean. The problem was the deer grazed them off. So I think we'll probably look to put in a, a late season, probably Heartland plot, I'm thinking. Which will be probably going in within the next 10 days. So we have our work cut out for us in doing that. Um, one thing that really excites me about this year is Cameron here. She's 10 years old. Um, we got her up and running about a month ago, early Christmas present, um, a Carbon Express Pursuit uh, 3.4 crossbow. So we've been doing pretty well with that. She's been shooting the lights out, and she's going to be hunting with us this year. So we got some redneck blinds that we're going to be hunting on her. We had some homemade blinds and some lone wolves that we're going to be perched above some great food sources come this fall. Uh, super excited to uh, get out with Marcus and her as well. Um, and that leads us into the deer we're going to be chasing. I've never seen uh, this many good bucks this early in the game. And I realize fully that once the velva comes off, uh, everything changes. But probably three main deer um, that we've actually named on the other farm. It's going to be Ted, D 
Dave and Waldo. Um, I'll just talk briefly on Dave. Dave we had an interaction with last year. Uh, it was the same episode that Tyler Rector shot that giant on around Christmas time. Um, we sent an update in and we had an encounter with him on November 15th of last year. He came in just like we had scripted and um, we were hunting over a, a, a big decoy and that big decoy scared that buck off. We never got a shot at him. Which I'm kind of happy about because yeah, he's, it he's blown out. up. He's he's a great looking buck this year. He's going to be like a mainframe, very symmetrical, probably 10 pointer, um, good bodied. He's he's going to be one of our main deer. Uh, why don't you tell us about Waldo and Ted? Waldo is uh, probably the first buck I told Chad about last year. Um, we saw him early on. I, I think it was probably beginning in June already. We knew he was going to be a brute. Um, kind of just disappeared. We uh, that's kind of why we gave him the name Waldo. He just vanished and I'd say probably December, probably December he showed back up in our in our clover plot and uh, daytime pictures of him and just never never could connect with him but he's he's back and bigger than ever this year. Uh, so we're definitely excited about him. Ted, <clears throat> I guess how did we, uh, Ted just kind of showed up last Ted year. Ted showed up probably. last year is probably a uh, young young two two year old yeah. but had had some had some potential and he's he's a good looking three year old yeah, this year yeah. gonna be one that's hard to pass up he's probably uh one 130 140 for um, sure a shooter a shooter for us yeah I mean, definitely uh in southeast wisconsin we can't be picky i mean anything over 125 130 inches for us the farms that we hunt um we gotta we gotta pull the trigger on you know all the hunt, all the farms that we hunt, with the exception of one family farm that Marcus goes to in Southwest Wisconsin, we're not the only people out there. We're competing. Even this property here, you know, we compete with other other bow hunters. And I don't want to say competing, but there's other people that 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 put pressure on this land and maybe hunt it differently than we do. So we get an opportunity at a, at a three, four year old buck. We're not we're not going to pass it up, and we're not going to be too picky. Um, just really excited to get a chance to hunt with Cameron this year. She got her. Uh, her taste of uh, some hunting this spring yeah. when she put a nice turkey down with a shotgun. So we're just hoping that it just follows suit and we can have a great time um, just out in God's creation doing what we're blessed to be able to do. I mean, even sitting out here on an interview on a beautiful August night. Um, Couldn't ask for a better evening. Yeah, it doesn't get much better than this. So so we truly, uh, we're grateful and we, we count our blessings as such. Justin. <laughs> I mean, we're going to new levels here now, naming food plots. I mean, I mean, if it's not bad enough, we name our bucks, which I, I quite frankly have a hard time doing. We are now naming No, food not plots. we. We are not naming anything. <laughs> Chad and Marcus decided to name their food plots, so hopefully those food plots actually pay off with some deer for them because it looks like they put a lot of work into not just planting them but also naming them for us. But I tell you what, it looks like they got a, a pretty good season lined up, you know, they for do. us this year. And, you know, Chad brings up a good point, you know, as far as like the, the quality or the age of the deer that those guys are trying to shoot. And, you know, one thing we've always tried to say is you kind of just have to be true to yourself, you know, who you are as a hunter and, you know, how much time you have to hunt, what type of areas you have to hunt. You know, not everybody has huge farms and an unlimited amount of time to hunt where they can hold out for you know, five and six year old deer. I mean, it's just True. not the reality of the world we live in. So those guys have said, hey, a good three year old walks by me, I'm shooting it. And you know what, good for them. Because believe me, I got plenty of those nice three year olds hanging on my wall at home. So I'm with them. Uh, yeah, and, and Justin, you know, we've said that from the beginning. I mean, we've always kind of basically told that to everybody, especially when you're one of the team members. I mean, at the end of the day, it, it's, it's your season, it's your hunt, it's your sit you know what, you gotta make the decision what you wanna yeah. shoot when that opportunity presents itself. But I agree with you, Justin, they've got a lot of good looking plots there, so if our luck starts running low, I think we give Marcus a call. Marcus said I can go home with him. Did he? He upped oh. me above Chad, he said, if I ever Whoa. wanted to go. I'm gonna call him as soon as we're done with this. He said the big dogs are allowed to come hunt and still can sit on the sidelines. Nice, so, all right. Uh, guys, next up we've got uh, two cool uh, you know, velvet segments here. Uh, one from Tyler Rector in Illinois, but first we've got Dustin DeCrew out in Wyoming. Uh, you know, Dustin is, is our Western guy, so he likes to drive around pretty much all summer long in, in glass animals and send us pictures. And, and this footage will to, make you To make move. us all jealous, so right. he's got white tails, mule deer, elk, moose, moose, everything, you name it. So let's start there and check it out now. All right, well, 
it is summer again. We are about two weeks away from antelope season. So out here just doing a little scouting. Got two little fawns here and a bunch of bunch of goats up on the hill. Um, Troy Spolum and his dad will be out here for the opener. So we've got uh, picked up a couple new pieces of ground this year. And one of them's over here. It's got about 300 head of antelope in it right now. So it should be good. Um, there's a there's a ton of bucks we've had had good moisture early so but I'm gonna come out here and we're just Jen and I are looking to see which front fence crossings they're using right now and um, we'll probably pop up a blind in another week or so so right now just some uh, scouting from the pickup and enjoying the day so later on we may run over um, I actually drew an elk tag this year which doesn't happen very often um, and that area's got about a 4,000 acre fire going on in it right now. So we might cruise over, take a look at that. But uh, for right now, we're gonna go look for deer and animal, bone or die. We were gonna go do some uh, scouting for elk uh, in the area that I drew a tag in, but unfortunately, there's a big fire over there. We're gonna look at that too, but unfortunately, they have the road closed, so we're gonna go, I guess we're gonna go look for elk, moose, and mule deer up here and see what we see. Look at the big moose. Look at the big moose. Right there. Yeah. Good job. <laughs> Where's the moose? Right there. <laughs> Do you see him? I see him. Do you see him? Well, hello, guys. Um, it is the last day of July, and Jen is out of town working, so I'm gonna go out. It's about 8:20, and see if I can find any uh, whitetail bucks uh, for when Sturgill comes out. Just gonna see if I can film any of the bucks that I've been seeing. So, um, not gonna have any hit list stuff for me for a little while. Um, I mean, the chances of a hit list for me are uh, not good anyway, because I don't usually hunt until everybody else is done. So with the exception of my elk tag that I did draw this year. So um, it's a pretty pretty tough to draw unit and I'm really excited I haven't had that tag since 07. And um, so it should be good. Possibly, I don't know if it works out with schedules and stuff, but Clinton may come out and film or uh, Hermie either way. So uh, hopefully I'll have somebody behind the camera because Jen will be like eight months pregnant and while she could probably do it, I'm not going to allow that. So anyway, um, we can go see if we can find some whitetails in the meantime and start kind of getting excited for the fall. So we're gonna keep on cruising down the road here and see what happens. Bow hunter die.
as you can tell, I'm facing right into the sun. But uh, the sun should be behind the trees here. Well, I'd say in uh, oh, the next 15 minutes, uh, that's when those deer will come out. And I'm not sure where they'll come out, but I'm sitting about uh, five yards from a public gravel road. It splits the cornfield I'm sitting in in the alfalfa field. funny how over the years things change. I remember being able to get out there and film sure. bucks in velvet and just have so much more time. I, I gotta admit, I'm absolutely jealous of both Tyler and Dustin getting out there and filming those bucks. And Dustin, I mean, just seriously, if that doesn't want to make you move out to the, the western states where yeah. you just see so many animals, I mean. I will say I'm jealous of them actually being able to go outside and film animals and not be destroyed by mosquitoes like we would around here. You can't yeah. be outside for more than about 30 seconds with out wanting to jump out of your skin. They're so bad. So, you know, it looks like those guys, you know, ha obviously have some great animals. You know, only time will tell whether or not they'll be able to catch up with them this fall. Uh, you know, as Dustin and Tyler both mentioned, they both have elk tags this year. Dustin is going to be hunting Wyoming. Tyler's going to be in, I believe, Utah. Utah. Yeah. You're going to be in Colorado. Uh, Dan Richardson's going to Colorado. So hopefully before and too Oregon. long, we got, uh, we, and you're going to Oregon. Yeah, I'm doing so two. So Todd's this year. doing two elk hunts. I don't this think year. I told you that yet. But. So, well, good for him. You know, you got a, a better chance of actually <laughs> killing one this year. So uh, guys, next up, we're gonna join Dean Krieger and Mike Pierce. You know, as we alluded to earlier, you know, both those guys are taking their kids out and doing a little bit of preseason work and, you know, just trying to get them ramped up for the hunting season. So uh, let's check in with those guys now. Uh, 
All right, here's a little update from the Krieger family. It's been a pretty busy summer for us, and uh, with the kids playing softball and baseball, uh, every weekend we're off uh, by a baseball diamond, and they got practice and games during the week also. So, but it's uh, late July here, and uh, Karsten and I, my son, we're gonna get a, a few cameras out to uh, try to take some inventory in uh, late summer here. Usually, I like to get them out by at least uh, the beginning of July, but we just haven't had any time. So we're gonna do that today and uh, let them sit for a while and hopefully we can uh, take some inventory of some of the bucks that are left over from last year. All right, Karsten and I got uh, one of the cameras hung on a stick and pick on the other end of the field here, and we're just coming up to this other corner here. And uh, last year, right here, I was getting pictures of uh, the buck that I ended up killing last year, uh, Dozer. Dozer always had a buck that always hung with him, and uh, we know of him, of him like the last two years, we call him the freak. He's got one good side, one messed up side. He wasn't real big last year, but you know, he's just destined to turn into something, something uh, pretty uh, non-typical, basically. So. Every time I got a picture of Dozer last year, uh, the freak was always with him. So we're feeling pretty good about this year. We know he's he should be still alive. The neighbor did found, find the sheds this spring. And um, get to my point here is I've got a camera that I hung in when I took my daughter spring turkey hunting this year. Put it on the, right on the edge of the field here just to get pictures of uh, turkeys, the kind of pattern the turkeys. So the camera's in there, see what happens. Maybe, uh, maybe we got pictures of uh, of something on there and it wouldn't surprise me if we didn't have the freak because this is where he was frequenting the last two seasons right up along this edge and uh, who knows maybe we have him so we're gonna trade out that that camera uh, on the tree because it's real weedy in there and up against the corn here so we're gonna put it on a stick and pick Carson has a stick and pick here in the, in his hand and uh, we're gonna put one right on the edge of the field here so we'll get that done and then we're gonna get out of here over 3,000 pictures on it, so uh, hopefully we have something. All right, so Carson and I just got home and uh, it's definitely a hot one out there. So we got uh, got a few cameras hung and uh, we're gonna let them uh, sit here for a few weeks and uh, maybe the next time you see us, we'll have a hit list put together. So all we can do is hope that we got something or we're gonna get something on camera and uh, fall's not too far away, I guess. So. Uh, We'll see what happens and uh, hopefully we got something big on camera. So it's a couple days after my son Karsten and I went and put some cameras out here in late July but we did pull that one camera that I had out since uh, late April and, and May for uh, turkey hunting this spring and the buck we're looking for, the buck we call the freak, is on here and we got him on on uh, May 31st so he's got some pretty good growth you know he's not huge yet but for uh, the end of May he's got some pretty good growth and looking at the way his rack is shaped, it's definitely him. There's no doubt about it. So this will be the third season that we got pics of him. So I'm excited about it. Hopefully he sticks around and we're gonna let the camera sit here for two to three weeks probably. And we'll go back in and, and check these cameras and see what we have and, and hopefully put a hit list together and uh, share with you guys. So I'm excited to see how big he actually gets this year. morning everybody it's July 24th I'm headed out to the lease to uh, check my trail cameras most importantly um, I am getting ready to start teaching my nine-year-old daughter Audrey a little bit more about hunting this year because this is going to be her first year to actually sit in a stand and try to harvest her own deer so we already ordered a carbon express crossbow for her um, We've got our hunter safety system harness and we're going out today and we're going to run some cameras together and we're going to check the property and then we're going to practice on climbing up our lone wolf um, sticks to get up into the tree safely and back down again. Okay guys, so I just kind of cleared this area a little bit. This is my stand from last year like I was just saying to you guys. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to hook into my lifeline 
I'm gonna get out there. I'm gonna check the safety of this stand and make sure that everything is okay before I allow Audrey to start practicing climbing. Hold the knot loop open, go ahead. Tighten down the carabiner lock. Okay, guys, so here's the deal. I know you couldn't see us, but I did follow Audrey all the way up the stand, and I've got one, two, three, four, five sticks to the stand. Uh, fifth one is really just a, a safety stick so that when you get up there, you have something to hold on to to get in the stand. I just think it's the best thing for us to do. So she went all the way up and all the way down. She had a little bit of a hard time, but she was doing a great job. Um, you know nine years old you're going to be a little bit nervous it's not a ladder it sticks you're tighter to the tree there's more things to move around and stuff so we got down to the bottom and uh i said what do you think audrey you want to try it again and she said yeah it was a lot of fun i want to do it again and i told her i'm not going up there with her this time she's going to have to do it on her own so we're going to uh take the risk no matter how mad my wife would get at me for allowing her to do this by herself and i'm going to go ahead and let her start climbing up and uh, again, she's hooked to her safety line and to her harness. If there is a slip up, I'm right here to help her. But that safety line is there to keep her from coming down to the ground. So. You're doing great. There you go. Awesome. Okay, go ahead and slide your mat. I cannot tell you, Audrey, how proud I am of you that not only did you climb up with me behind you, but that you were sure enough of yourself and your abilities and brave enough to climb up this tree by yourself and climb back down. Um, all I can say, guys, is uh, stay tuned, watch us coming up, because this little one right here is going to lay the smack down on something this year, and uh, I couldn't be happier. So until then, Audrey, what do we say? Bow hunter die, baby. Bow hunter die, guys. We're going to check back in with you soon. Obviously, Mike and Dean are super excited about getting their kids out in the field with them this fall, you know, as they should be. You know, Dean took his daughter out last year, and I know she shot a, she shot a buck, and I know that her little brother was definitely jealous that, that she won up them and, and beat him to the punch. So hopefully, you know, Carson's going to have just as, as good a luck as she did last fall, and then well, we got Mike. Knowing Dean and knowing uh, He'll the be success that Dean hunts, I yeah. have a darn good feeling that Carson's going to be in pretty good shape. Yeah, it runs in the blood with that family for sure. Uh, and then, you know, we've got Mike who, who gave us, you know, some great tips, some great points. You know, he did take his daughter out there before the season started and showed her, you know, the proper way to, you know, hook up your lifeline and make sure your harness is mm -hmm. on and climb into the tree and do all that stuff, you know, and get your kids familiar with what's going to happen, you know, once they get out into the field. I know he's got some pretty high hopes, you know, that she's going to be able to harvest a deer this fall. She's been practicing with her crossbow like crazy, so I just got to cross your fingers and I guess wait for October. Well, that October is coming quicker than we realize. I mean, if, if if you have not made your purchases yet for bow hunt, you better you better get going. Every time you've been taking a break, I've been kind of flipping. Yeah, through I pretty this. much go home at night and just peruse that catalog. It's I sit on my couch and just look through the Lancaster it's catalog, good. trying to find more stuff to buy, which I'm sure my wife loves. But you know, speaking of uh, Lancaster archery guys, we have another great tech tip for this week, and this kind of you know follows along with Mike Pierce's segment with his daughter out shooting a crossbow. I mean, obviously crossbows. Are becoming infinitely more popular yeah. over the last couple of years, and you know there is a, some trip or tricks and tips for being able to take care uh, of your crossbow and maintain it. So that's what we're going to look at now. 
Uh, crossbows are easy to own, shoot, hunt with, but you gotta maintain them. One of the first things in crossbow maintenance is before you use it, just visually inspect it. The limbs, run your fingers over all the edges, feel if there are little fibers, little carbon fibers starting to pop out. You don't want that, that's indication of a limb that's starting to crack. Look at your cams, uh, do they look like they're seated properly? Check all your bolts, your connection, every crossbow is gonna have a spot where there's a bolt that connects uh, the bow to the stock, check that out, make sure it's tight. If you're looking at your serving and you see that it's starting to separate, if you see flat spots, if you see uh, areas where you see it's fraying, uh, that's a bad sign. You don't want to shoot that crossbow, take it to your pro shop. The two main things that you're gonna need for crossbow maintenance are some sort of rail lube and a string wax. Uh, if you see what looks like little hairs flaring off of the string material, that's an indication that it's dry. You only want to put the wax on the string material. You do not want to put it on your serving. Blend it in with your fingers, run your fingers up and down so you're spreading the, the wax around and working it into the fibers a little bit. Get an approved crossbow rail lube. There's a lot of heat that's created from this bowstring riding along that rail. This lube helps uh, minimize that heat and minimize damage to your string. Put it on the rail as far as you can reach it with the dispensing device and then just take your finger and run it up and down to spread the lube out. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, you can check us out at LancasterArchery.com. Well, those are definitely some great tips with Lancaster Archery for sure. So if you need to get some gear, don't forget about Lancaster Archery. But Justin, this yes, is sir. it. Come this on, man. It. You got to be feeling, I know I'm feeling it for sure now. I mean, I have been trying on my gear. I've been washing my gear. I'm, starting I'm getting to get there. My, I'm, I'm slowly I'm, getting there. I'm, I'm rounding up all my gear that's been laying around here in the studio and around the office, and I'm starting to bring it home and consolidated. This I haven't actually gone through it yet, but I'm getting it all together. Yeah, and if you remember last year in the episode when we finally got a sneak peek of Justin's garage, that's where half of our stuff ends up. So this is the time you of know, year You know, oddly enough, I was looking for our string loop pliers today, and I couldn't find them anywhere. I wonder if they're at your house. I bet if I go there, I would find them. Yeah, that's kind of funny. How did they get to my house? They are at my house. Oh. Wait, no, what, I'm serious. What, do you think I, I planted them, them at your no, house? I, dude, I, like, I would ever use those. I always let you fix my bow. Uh, yeah, okay. Well, somehow they ended up at your house. That, how, I'm serious. I mean, I literally saw them on my garage floor. I'm wondering how or where did those even come? Did I take your case by accident? Did we switch cases? In case. Somehow something they were happened. just in the studio. So the anyways. bottom line is I'm going to be watching everything around here because I just know Fair enough. this I'll, is the time that things disappear. Well, I'm just going to make you a wish list from Lancaster. We're going to order that. some new gear. So, guys, that's all the action we've got uh, for this week's episode. Of course, before we go, we wanted to take just a couple seconds to thank the folks that sent in their trophy photos for this week's episode. James Caleb. Shane Afflag. Bo Jacob. Ed Summers. And Riley Budge. Congratulations, everyone. Those are some great trophies. Justin, I got to tell you, looking at Ed's buck here with that mass, I mean, I'll tell you what. What's the heck Dude, of the I want that. That's awesome. Wisconsin. It's a Wisconsin buck. Come on, Ed. Give us a call at the office personally. We, we want to know. We wanna know yeah, we want to hear the story on this buck because that mass on that deer is incredible. But listen, if you'd like to see yourself right here in another episode of Bowhunter Die, you got to send in your photograph. Justin, with yes, that sir. being said, how are we going to end this baby? What else we got going on? Uh, man, it's time to get fall food plots in the ground. I may actually work on that this weekend. Uh, oh, that's why it got canceled for this morning. You and Tommy are doing some sneak attacks. No, sneak no, attack my other there. spot. Not, not at oh. our community spot. At, the, mm -hmm. at my other spot. And uh, checking some trail cameras. Going to shoot my bow a little bit and... I don't know. Kill some time till October. I guess actually until September 17th is Wisconsin opener. Tommy and I will be up there then. Will you be elk hunting then? I am no, the 1st through the 5th. I'm going to Oregon. September. September. I have not And then when do you go to Colorado? No, that's top secret. Okay, no, fair enough. 18th so, or something. I don't, I don't remember the So dates. when you're not in the office, I'll know where you're at. Well, guys, it, it is that time. It's crunch time. Get out. Shoot your bows. You know, make sure your stands are trimmed out. Make sure that they're all safe. Uh, you know, September and October are right around the corner. We will be out bow hunting before you know it. So until next time.
bow hunter die. For more exciting action, be sure to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram and receive live updates from our team members as well as the latest happenings in the bow hunting and archery world. Be sure to share your photos, stories, and experiences as well. And don't forget to pick up your official bowhunting.com and bowhunter die gear by visiting bowhunting.com forward slash gear. We have a full selection of hats, shirts, decals, wristbands, and much more. We decided to go. <laughs> Was it bad? He looks like he's in a ska band. <laughs> Dude, I'm not wearing it. They're all making fun of me. All right, so who's going to start this one? So Marcus's brother came to the booth. Can you yeah, with how many episodes of Born Bad have you watched? All right, Todd starts. <laughs> <laughs>